Hi everyone. So continuing my series on Arduino-based oscilloscopes or, or waveform capture devices, if you prefer, these certainly don't compete with real oscilloscopes, I've been thinking about how it would be handy to have some load and status monitoring for that Westinghouse generator that you saw in the first video. Now my particular generator model has a display panel that indicates voltage and frequency, which is handy, but it doesn't provide any monitoring of how much load is on the generator. So I don't have any indication of whether I'm approaching an overload or conversely, if I have excess capacity that I could use to run something else. If you have a transfer switch bringing your generator power into your home, those sometimes have analog indicators built in to show you how much power you're drawing on each leg. But if you instead have an interlock, those normally don't come with any instrumentation. There's nothing stopping you from adding it, but that's a separate piece of equipment that you have to buy separately, and most people aren't thinking about that. There is a product from a company called Croxy that some people have used to monitor current draw in various applications. I'll put a link down in the description if you want to check that out. Some people have uh, installed those onto their generators. You have to have two of them on a 240 volt generator, one to monitor each of the legs. And that gives you a nice enough little voltage display, frequency, current, and some other figures. So it's more status than you get from the basic indicators on a transfer switch or on the built-in panel of a standard generator. But none of those solutions look at the quality of the waveform. So I thought I'd try my hand at putting together a little status panel of my own. And this is what I came up with. Just like last time, it's using an STM32 blue pill as the brain of the operations. It's a little bit simplified compared to the previous project, whereas this one, um, was using a voltage converter to provide positive and negative rails for the op amp in order to uh, handle signals that went below their ground. Um, this one just grounds the signals uh, in the center of the voltage range of the, the microcontroller, the 3.3 volt range. Um, so we're actually monitoring three signals now. We've got two amp clamps, which are these. They clamp around the wire in order to sense how much current is going through it. And then also coming down here, and you can see this is kind of a bodge job that I was making up as I went. This brings in a voltage that corresponds to the line voltage. This is a low voltage board. It's not the actual line voltage coming in. It's been reduced, but this that's what this is used to monitor. And again, I'll put a link down below if you want to get the old, the previous version of this. Um, that was designed more as an oscilloscope where you can connect standard oscilloscope probes onto the BNC connectors. But for this project, I have a somewhat smaller board, which I've designed to fit inside one of these project boxes that I have for neater packaging. So, and then the display module connects on top of here in order to print out the information about how much current we're drawing, the shape of the waveform, the voltage, and other statistics on how much energy we've used. Now, I will put a link in the description to get your hands on one of these PCBs, but to be clear, this board is for low voltage only. If you happen to have a low voltage signal you're interested in monitoring, that's great. But if you're determined to monitor a generator, and I don't recommend you try anything you see here at home, then you can't just feed 120 volts or 240 volts into this. That would end very badly. Uh, something has to be done to scale down that voltage and make it safe. This video is for educational purposes only. Electricity is very dangerous. I don't claim to be an expert in these matters. Nothing in this video is intended as advice. I'm neither an electrician nor an electrical engineer. I'm just some idiot on YouTube. Consult a qualified person before attempting anything remotely resembling this. But that said, I've seen some very scary generator-related advice on YouTube once, so lest someone try something extraordinarily dumb, I do want to say that anything you're wiring into high voltage should probably be fused at as low a current as you think you can get away with. And this is just sensing, so you should be drawing almost no current. And stepping down the voltage is often done with either a transformer or a resistor divider network. 
And in case you're not aware, you can get big two watt resistors that can handle a lot more abuse than the tiny little quarter watt resistors that you more commonly see in Arduino projects. So do consider overload conditions uh, if you're attempting anything remotely resembling this. But again, don't try this at home. So I've got it here installed inside its plastic enclosure and I will connect in the display module. And so we can connect it into the generator and put in the current clamps and see how this all works. So we're up and running here and you can see that it says the frequency is about 65 hertz, which is a little high, so I'll have to check that out to see if my generator is running a little fast. And it says that the voltage is only about 130 volts, and that was meant to be the voltage across both legs, so that should display about 240, so clearly there's something in the instrumentation here that's a little bit off because the voltage can't be 130 across the two legs. Um, but let's put some more load on this and see what happens. It figures I'm drawing about three amps on each leg, and it looks like I don't quite erase the top of the waveform very well, so I'll have to fix that in software. Um, you'll notice I'm displaying the wattage, as you might call it, in volt amps. Uh, one of the confusing things about generators is that they tend to quote their capacity in volt amps rather than watts. And if you remember from your physics class, the definition of a watt is a volt amp, but they're actually talking about two different quantities here that happen to be in physically the same units. So watts is usually taken to be the the actual power that's being drawn whereas volt amps is usually taken to be the um the rms current times the rms voltage without any awareness of the phase relationship between the two so that can be kind of confusing if you know a little bit about electricity but are trying to shop for a generator Let's see if we can increase the load. So that's our entire house running on that right now. We're not using a whole lot of power, about five amps on each leg. And I believe that number is about right because I've got one of the legs instrumented with a clamp meter, so five amps is about right. Well, let's run some water and see if we can get the well pump to kick on. There we go, so that spiked up to a good 12 or 13 amps. And just to show my voltage is about right, here's a multimeter measuring just one of the legs at 120 volts. So I think the two of them combined really would be about 240 volts. But if we look at the frequency, it really is high. So I'll have to take a look at my generator after this and see if I can slow that down a little bit. And you might remember this gadget from my first video on the subject. So that waveform really does seem to look like that. Uh, and I'm not sure why that would be. 
you have any idea, please leave a comment down below. So anyway, like I said, don't try anything like this at home unless you've consulted a qualified individual. But if you've got some low voltage signals you'd like to monitor, then this actually might be kind of a handy little pocket version of our Arduino-based oscilloscope. It fits into this ordinary little plastic enclosure, and you could probably get some basic three and a half millimeter to alligator clip probes for probably half the price of real BNC oscilloscope probes, which are overkill for the really low frequencies at which this thing would work anyway. Um, although this doesn't have a provi provision for one mega ohm impedance, uh, so if you were trying to use the resistive divider um, externally to that, you'd have to modify things a bit. Um, so it would be interesting to sort of hack a user interface onto this, maybe jumper the wires that run the resistive touch screen on this, which I'm not using right now, to some of the unused pins on the blue pill board and make a, a user interface sort of like in the first video. And it would be a pretty limited little device. The range is probably only about plus or minus one volt, but it's a pretty handy little two-channel pocket-sized device. So, like I said, I'll put a link down below to the PCB for this project, but please don't try anything dumb. Um, and if you do try anything not dumb, please let me know how it goes. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Thanks.